Today we'll be talking about the Armenian mythology, where and how it originated, and what other cultures and nations have influenced some of the beliefs in pre-Christian Armenia. One of the oldest known cults or religions in the Armenian highlands is the worship of the sun. They believed the sun to be the creator and considered themselves as children of the sun or in Armenian children of Ash. The exact date of the foundation of this belief is unfortunately unknown. However, it can also be seen before and during Hayat Saazi and later during Nairi rule. This religion has been recorded by historians until 14th century. They fought against both the Christians and the Muslims until were wiped out of existence. Fire also played a huge role in this worship, and it was considered sacred as well, but not any fire. They worshipped the fire of a special oven called Tonish, which is still used today. There are some reports of certain villages in Armenia in the 19th century that they would swear by their oven. Yeah, it's only going to get weirder from here. People of this belief during pre-Urartian or Vanic era would burn the edge of their belts as a protection from any animal or monsters that may come after them. They would also use that fire to light other torches and fire pits in the house. They would burn some of the chicken's feathers for them to lay more eggs, and would dab the ashes in the water and engrave their children's faces with the wet ash for them to be healthy and not get any diseases. There are also recordings of worship of trees, specifically plane trees. Apparently, those trees were considered sacred and great trouble would come upon a sorry soul who would harm or even touch the tree. The priests would make predictions of the future by looking at the movement of the leaves on the trees during specific days. There is also evidence of worship of the moon. The sun and the moon were seen as twins, as brother and sister. Twin children born into this society were believed to have special powers and were worshipped as well, regardless of their gender. They would attend the mood of the elders and were given specific place in the hierarchy of the society. Worship of the twins can also be seen in many other cultures. There are around 79 known gods of Urartu. The three main ones are Haldi or Haldi, Teshiba, god of storms and thunder, and Shvini as a sun god who was often represented as a kneeling man holding a winged solar disc. Such a high number of gods comes from warfare and encounters with the other neighboring cultures, such as Hurrians, Assyrians, Egyptians and other Mesopotamian peoples. You see, Urartians, instead of forcing conversion upon the conquered people to their religion, would often adopt some of their gods to their pantheon. Haldi was a warrior god to whom Urartian kings would pray to for a victory in a battle or a war. He was portrayed as a man, sometimes with wings, sometimes without, standing on a lion. A temple dedicated to Haldi was fortified, and it would have great number of weapons, shields, swords and spears as well as armor stored inside, and it was sometimes referred to as House of Weapons. One Assyrian inscription from Sargon II lists mass amount of weaponry dedicated and stored at Haldi's temple. It is known to us that Urartians were very religious. One Urartian king supposedly committed suicide after hearing of Assyrians sacking the city of Ardini and carrying off with the statue of Haldi, amongst other things. Here is how it might have went down. With the establishment of Achaemenid Empire and later Alexander's conquests, the Armenian pantheon saw influx of Iranian and Greek gods. Some of these gods or early forms of them already existed in the Armenian highlands, but they either replaced or were attributed to the already existing gods. For example, Aramast, possibly a mix of Ahura Mazda and local Armenian Ara and Vanatur, was the chief and creator god of Armenian version of Zoroastrianism. Later, he was portrayed as Armenian Zeus. Anahit was a goddess of fertility and birth. She was daughter or wife of Aramast. Vahagan was a god and a dragon slayer. Nane was a mother goddess of war and wisdom. Mihir was also son of Aramast and was god of sun and light. Tish is a merciful god of wisdom, a written language, culture, science, messenger of gods, and guide of souls, like Egyptian Anubis, Greek Hermes, and Roman Mercury. Spandaramant was also daughter of Aramast, and the goddess of fertility, vineyards, and the underworld. Barsamin was a god of sky and the weather. 
and it wouldn't be a mythology video without some monsters and spirits. One of those monsters is Arales. These dog-like creatures, which are often modeled on the Armenian Shepherd, were believed to have healing powers. They even could revive the fallen soldiers by licking the wounds clean. Arales is possibly the best medic you could ever ask for. There is even a legend that has those creatures in it, but we will cover that in a separate video. Al is an evil dwarvish spirit that attacks pregnant women and steals newborn babies. They can be both male and female, and can become invisible. These creatures also steal organs, possibly not to sell them in the black market, but rather eat them. They steal the baby and run to the nearest water. And if they are able to cross any water source, you will lose that baby or those organs forever. If you're ever attacked by an owl and you live next to a river, wish that kidney a farewell, because you're never going to see it again. There are a lot more creatures, legends, myths and beliefs from pre-Christian Armenia, but we will cover those in the future. If you want to see more about any of those mentioned myths, beliefs or legends, please feel free to comment. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. As always, thank you for watching, I'm Arminator and I hope to see you next time.